the CEO of Shipstead in Sweden, Ralf Gyntal up on stage. Ralf, please give it up for Ralf. <laughs> So, uh, very nice to have you here on the Sime stage. Uh, yeah, nice to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in so, sort of the media company of the future. You're sort of part entrepreneur, you're very digital, but you're also newspapers and, and, and what I had from Shipstead when I was young. So, how, yeah. do you, how, do you sort of, how do you see the media company evolving in the future? Well, it's true. We are really both, and we want to be both. Both keep to our traditional roots, but also be a digital leader. <laughs> And I think that basically what's happening right now is the trends that we are seeing, we will continue to see them, see them a few more years. I mean, all the local monopolies are being teared down and, uh, and new technology-driven companies, sometimes global companies, are taking market shares. And we are really between all that. We are really between our local competitors and these new global competitors. And we are doing well so far. So far. And what do, you think that, what do you think a media company will be in the future? Will it be a media house with lots of different properties, uh, or will it sort of will it evolve into something different? I think we ha we will have both. We will have some um, global companies, one brand companies, as Google, Facebook, uh, uh, which will be of course extremely successful, mm -hmm. and we will have this kind of uh, media houses that we represent with different brands and uh, which uh, companies that are from, uh, for instance, Sweden or Norway but are trying to, to take uh, markets uh, in, in other countries, uh, countries as well. And, and what do you think about sort of newspapers and traditional media product? Will they have a role in the future? Or will that change or evolve or how? Well, it is changing and it's changing at a quite high pace right now. And uh, well, of course, if you look at the distribution channels, uh, the papers, the print papers mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, old television, of course, the distribution channels will, will more or less disappear. It, it will take time, but they will more or less disappear. So you're also saying that, that, that the newspaper will disappear? Well, the, the print mm -hmm. will uh, perhaps not disappear, but their market share will be lower, extremely much lower in 10 years than it mm -hmm. is today. But the brands and the content will survive. Not all the brands, not all the content, but many of the content and many of the brands will survive. And I also think that some of the brands will not only survive, but they will be able to, to, uh, to take new markets and new market share in this digital market. I mean, for instance, the, most, the, the, the strongest internet brand in Sweden, probably, uh, together, together with Blocket, perhaps, is Aftonbladet. Yeah. It's a 180 years old brand, yeah. and they are taking market shares in this digital market. Mm -hmm. And what are the important factors? Sort of who can you believe in then if you don't have your newspaper, if you don't have sort of somebody who's, you know, you know at least should be a truth seeker? Uh, how will that look in the future? Will you believe as much in an internet side as you do in a, in a sort of a traditional quality newspaper? Well, you can always trust us with or without paper. <laughs> it's, uh, and and uh, so I think that our tradition gives us a strength and, and uh, we, we must continue to build upon that. So it's not only about taking, going into new markets, it's also about uh, be, being respectful to your, to your past and, be, and, uh, and built upon that. So I want to go into entrepreneurship or co-entrepreneurship. One of the sort of theses I'm, I'm, I'm exploring during these two days is how can large companies be co-entrepreneurs and creators of companies? And in that field, you've been an inspiration for a lot of other companies. And I just want to find out what's the secret sauce? How can you do that when other media companies around the world, they're not succeeding very well? Typically what happens is they say, we have to go into that internet. It's agenda point number 11 to do the, these investments. All the time goes into the old problems, not the new opportunities. And then they take a sales director and say, now you're the venture managers, go build ventures, and it doesn't really work. And they get fired, and then they start all over yeah. again. Yeah. Whereas you build, <laughs> block it in I don't know how many countries right now, extremely profitable business, and, and you built a portfolio, I don't know of how much, maybe a billion euros worth of new stuff, whereas the, the newspapers have been declining. So yeah. how do you do that? Well, that's a good question. I mean, uh, and obviously, uh, our international success is very much built upon our entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's, it's thanks to them that we are successful. And I think that perhaps what we are doing is that we, we, we are respectful to entrepreneurs. 
we don't just acquire small companies. Mm -hmm. We are engaged on a journey together with the entrepreneurs of the small enterprises that we, that we buy. And, uh, and it's a question of selection, of course. It's not just about entering new markets or finding interesting business ideas. It's really about finding the best entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, when you get them into your company, you must let them continue to be entrepreneurs. How, but how do you do that? We heard yesterday that, uh, that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Yes. So how do you take somebody from a fast-moving, crazy work all around the clock, uh, eating noodles kind of culture to a Norwegian media giant? Well, uh, the, the Norwegian media giant has to be agile, and we have to adopt to them as well. Mm -hmm. so, so what we do is that we, we let them, for a few years at, at least, stay in, in their company mm -hmm. and build it. And at the same time, we give the strength of, of the large media group. Uh, and then, of course, uh, after a, a few years, they become uh, an integrated part of the media group. I mean, they become Block domesticated. It, yes, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Blocket is as much a part of Shipstead today as uh, Aftonbladet or Svenska Dagbladet mm. is. Uh, and also, I think that what, what we do and what you must do is to put a lot of attention uh, into these companies and a lot of time, not only money. So we have a, uh, one of our really best uh, management teams are 100% focused on managing and helping these companies. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the, the mistakes you think that colleagues in the industry are doing uh, when they don't get this right? Well, I mean, first of all, we have two different kind of competitors. We have this kind of, of uh, usually American or at least global uh, media companies, and we have these more traditional local companies. And uh, I mean, first of all, they're doing many things right, uh, but I think the the, the local, uh, traditional companies, uh, basically, I think that these still need to be more disruptive. Mm -hmm. uh, very often, uh, they and perhaps we are focusing on, uh, on uh, defending uh, things and, and, uh, and um, uh, uh, keeping the old, so to say. But we should more focus on, on, uh, on acquiring new ma markets, on, on the innovative things. And, uh, and that's, I think, uh, the basic mistake, uh, that uh, you must dare to be disruptive. Mm. Uh, compete with yourself? And compete with, your with yourself. I mean, that's basically what we have been doing, and doing for, for 10 years now. Uh, regarding the, 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 the large international players, I would love them to make more mistakes, <laughs> so to say. Uh, they are tough competitors. Uh, of course, sometimes they have uh, difficulties in adopting to, to local markets. Uh, and that's, if, if you're not coming from a, an American environment, sometimes you understand these complicated local markets perhaps in a better way. Uh, I mean, for instance, in France, where we have built uh, Le Bon Coin, which mm -hmm. is the largest classified market in, in, uh, marketplace in France. Beating the, eBay every day. Yes, and, and, and basically the, the feeling of the brand Le Bon Coin is not that it's part of a large media group, it's that really it's a French <coughs> people's movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's perhaps something that we can do uh, better sometimes. But it's, uh, I've been a little bit involved in the, the, the blocket rollouts, and every market you come to, some smart advertising agency says, oh, the site is ugly, it should be like this because it's France. And you just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you do it exactly the same way that you do it, and you know what works. But that also takes a lot of guts to sort of have your view and just do that in yes. many, many countries. Absolutely, and we made the same mistake of ourselves. I mean, we, we tried to create our own Blocket in Sweden on our own, mm -hmm. uh, and it was much more nicer than, than, uh, than Blocket, <laughs> because Blocket is ugly, yeah. uh, but it works. Uh, and, uh, and we really put lots of money and lots of market po marketing power into that, and that was, uh, well, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, of course, we bet all the traditional players, because they did the same thing. But we saw this small company in the southern part of Sweden, which we, we didn't know the guys, we didn't know anything about it, and we just thought of taking market shares month after month after month. Mm -hmm. And at the end, at end of the day, we said that these guys who are creating this ugly site, they're probably better at us in doing something. So mm -hmm. you better acquire them quickly. <laughs> and, and we did, and that was 10 years ago. And after that, I mean, first we, together, we, we conquered the Swedish market, and uh, well, now we are really tr trying to, to becoming the, 
the number one player in, in the global classified yeah. market. And how many markets are you in now? Uh, around 30 track. markets. 30 markets. And, and it's, it's, uh, some of them are quite mature. We, we are making lots of money and having a strong market share. And uh, some other markets, we are really at the beginning. Yeah, you're, I think you're the second largest site in Malaysia or something like yes. that. All categories. Yes. You know, larger than Facebook, you're smaller than Google. But how, yes. how, do, you, how do you look on a... I, I just, it would be interesting to see the, the management meeting where you're sitting like, okay, now we're a Norwegian media company with properties in Sweden. We have Aftonbladet and Svenska Dagbladet. And then you spin the globe and say, maybe we should be beating eBay in Malaysia. And you just start, you know, how does, how does geography... How does internet offset geography in your strategies? And do you think that that's something maybe other industries should look more into because now there is an international opportunity that looks different? Yeah, well, we, we have a twofold strat strategy. The, the first one is within the classified market. And in the classified market, we're really saying we, should be a, we shall be a, a global player and we shall be the number one player and we, we, we should be best in the world and, and, uh, and in uh, long term, not all the countries, but uh, many, many countries. That's one part of our uh, uh, strategy. The other one is to say that, okay, we have some countries where we are really extremely strong on the internet, on the online market. Mm -hmm. And that's basically Sweden, Norway, uh, Baltic countries. And I think that that strategy as well we will build, but it will take more time because that, uh, you can't conquer the world uh, to, uh, in one day with that kind of strategy. But we are trying in France right now mm -hmm. to do the same thing as we are doing in in France, in Sweden, and in, in Norway, and we'll see. It's uh, it's it's a more complicated, it's a more more time-consuming strategy than than to just be focused on the classified market. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you can see in Sweden, it, it works really well with all of these brands you could see in the in the movie. What what what, you, what kind of new leadership challenges do you see, or what kind of leadership? What, is there a ship that way, and in, in sort of, and what, what does that leadership uh, include, so to speak? Yes, there is a ship that way, but, but of course it's challenging because, first of all, as I told you before, our leaders must, uh, on one hand, uh, really be proud of our role in society and, and our traditions. Mm -hmm. It's still very important uh, mm -hmm. to, to keep the integrity of, of, uh, of the, the media mentality, so to say, mm -hmm. and, and to, to understand the role we play in society. Uh, but at the same time, it's an extremely competitive market, mm -hmm. and, and you must be extremely market-oriented. So when we are at, at our best, we, we are able to combine these two worlds. Uh, but the challenge for our leaders, of course, is that uh, the, the, mar uh, the, um, the business has gone from being product-oriented to become market-oriented. Mm -hmm. And that we have learned the last 10 years. And now we have learned that, and now we see that now it's really more technology-driven than market-driven. And that's a new challenge for us. And to turn this kind of, of a media giant into a technology-driven company, that's really a challenge. So that's, that's I would say, the, the main management challenge today. But it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. You see that in the music industry, they were distribution and logistics centric. Now they're starting to become technology centric. They have completely different, different uh, talents that they attract now than before. Uh, and, and, and you're also changing the way you structure yourself. Yep. You have centralized a lot of functions. Uh, Anders Berglund is, is sort of running a cross, uh, as you understand, cross ships that team yep. now. Wh why are you doing that? And is centralizing, is that a, a sort of a way to go forward? Yeah, I mean, in order to be competitive, I mean, uh, compare with, with the large global companies with, with uh, uh, extremely important R&D resources uh, uh, and so on. We have to centralize some functions, and we are doing that. But if we look at sales, because that's what, uh, what you're talking about right now, it's really a combination, because we don't believe in a totally centralized uh, sales department. We think that we will have both. We still have uh, the brand-oriented sales department of the of, uh, Hitta, of uh, Aftonblad, of Blocket, and we will keep that. Uh, but on the top of that, we have to build a new uh, centralized sales function, because in order to, uh, to be able to, uh, to give uh, the whole media universe of ships that to the advertisers, we must centralize that function. It's not possible to give that kind of, of uh, possibilities to the clients if we just continue to work in, in silos. So we have to do both, and I'm sure that will work out uh, quite well. What, what, uh, if you look at entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs, there are a lot of entrepreneurs here. Uh, what are you on the lookout for buying now? <laughs> 
Well, I mean, th th there are obviously, obviously some different um, uh, industries we want to continue growing into. Mm -hmm. And uh, at early stages, it's, uh, we still think that we are not best at everything. So we have to acquire competence from these entrepreneurial companies. Mm -hmm. And as I told you before, we are looking lots at the entrepreneurs themselves. Mm -hmm. If they really have an a, a edge competence, we, we, uh, we are still uh, very interested in, in, in buying such companies. Mm -hmm. And we are continuously looking at different companies. Any special um, fields that you're ex especially excited about? Uh, I mean, right now we are looking at, for instance, peer-to-peer -peer companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking still at personal finance companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so we personal have finance like Lando and, and you've yeah. made a number of acquisitions yeah. there, yeah? So, and, so I mean, uh, personal finance is a very good example of, of, a, of a new kind of market that we have uh, the opportunity to, to enter. And uh, as you know, uh, Lando has been a tremendous success in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so, so that's one field that is quite interesting. But I think that um, uh, if, we, if, if I would look, okay, top priorities where we have to be innovative the, the coming years. I would say definitely personal finance, mm. uh, with or without acquisitions. Uh, but I would also point out uh, journalism uh, as one of the, 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 the most important areas where we have to be innovative. Mm. And I think that if we look at uh, Europe and uh, especially Scandinavia, the good news is that we have with our old brands really been able to, uh, to take journalism into a new digital era. Mm. Uh, and if you look at the, the United States, for instance, many of the old newspapers, well, they just remain the old newspapers and they have disappeared. Mm. Uh, but the good thing with the United States is that you can see lots of innovation within journalism. Like and Huffington I think Post. And Huffington a lot of Post, the Bleach Report, you have uh, SB Nation, you have many uh, of these kind of really interesting products. And I think that we, we should have more of that kind of innovation in, in Europe uh, as well. Mm. And that I see really as, as an interesting field for, for, for the years to come. It's not only about uh, defending old journalism, it's, it's about creating new journalism. I think that's also an interesting takeaway for a lot of other industries. It's not about defending the old industry and what you're doing right now, because that's all often a defensive stance. Yeah. It's about, okay, how can we evolve it with, with new technology? And I it's think about defending and conservation. And of yeah. course, I really think that we have some important things we have to conserve. Mm -hmm. But you can't have that focus as a media group. You must acquire, you must be aggressive, mm -hmm. you must uh, be innovative. Mm -hmm. So to all you entrepreneurs out there, if you're in personal finance or if you have innovative journalistic models, you talk to Raul, 10% yes. for the host, of course. So uh, <laughs> I, will, uh, I will make you very rich. <laughs> last question. If, if uh, you, by a strike of a magic wand, became the mayor of Stockholm with total power and your focus was to create more entrepreneurship, jobs, build an ecosystem here. What are some of the things that you would, you would probably do? Well, I mean, uh, I'm in the media industry, and I, I, I remember a few years ago, uh, politicians in Stockholm were talking a lot about uh, you know, making uh, uh, Stockholm as a financial center. I, I, I say, well, good luck. We have a few financial centers in Europe already, <laughs> uh, and they are struggling as well. Uh, but I really think that if you look into media, and now, of course, media in, in, in a broad sense of mm -hmm. uh, way, well, uh, with a very broad definition, I think that we really have something in, in, um, in Scandinavia, and as the politicians say that Stockholm is the capital of Scandinavia, <laughs> it should be logical really to, to build Stockholm as an as a innovative center of new media. Mm. And it, I think that Stockholm is really a very inter interesting place in, in, in in that sense, it's really, it, it is already, uh, in some ways, uh, uh, that kind of center, but it's not thanks to the politicians. It's partly thanks to us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming here. Thank you very much. Thank you.